When you can filter every decision you make, the words that come out of your mouth, how you speak to yourself, the emotions that you are choosing, when you can do that, you can literally shape the results in your life because you're shaping the person you're becoming. And this is going to be challenging because there's going to be a lot of obstacles, hurdles along the way, but you don't want to stop once you come across the first hurdle. That's an invitation for growth. Without the pain in your life, there wouldn't be no spiritual growth and there would be no meaning or value of what good you want to achieve in your life. What is up, guys? Welcome to the Conscious Warrior Podcast. I am your host, Kuba Swinski. For those first time tuning in across any of my social media platforms, this episode, you're basically going to get to know a little bit about me, who I am, what are my experiences, and what do I do. For those who've already been tuning in across my journey through the health and wellness space, then welcome again. So first question, who am I, what do I do, and what are my experiences? So basically, I'm a holistic health and lifestyle coach, teaching people how to lose fat, build lean muscle, as well as mindset mentoring through sustainable practices to find more confidence and joy in what you do in life. I wasn't always in coaching. Before that, I actually completed my university studies in aerospace engineering, and I was engaged at the time. So through that, I thought, okay, this is what life is about. But once I reached the finish line, I was questioning a lot of things and I truly wasn't satisfied or fulfilled in where I was. I was questioning, is there more to life? And this is when I first came across my first ever personal development book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And it taught me a lot in terms of the difference between a rich person's mentality versus a poor person's mentality and how they manage fear in their life. Fear, cynicism, laziness, bad habits, arrogance. It also taught me to some degree about financial literacy, like how to become more financial literate with your money. During the time, <laughs> I only grasped a little bit of that concept because you know, that level of perception and the, and the depth of understanding of when you read these personal development books, there's so much information there for you to absorb. Sometimes you skim across important points in the actual information that you're reading. So Going into it now, four years later, I think I can grasp a lot more information. I think it's around four or five years later. I can grasp more information due to the experiences of me being in coaching and in, and in business as well. They also taught and showed the demonstration of how the poor cling onto their jobs for safety and they don't like taking risks. So this is what really inspired me to just really pivot and change my career from aerospace engineering into personal training and selling supplements through a multi-level marketing business model. Multi-level marketing, also known as MLM, I got the idea through Robert Kiyosaki. Again, this is a great way to literally start a business at low risk and low level entry. So it was a good way to get out there, get uncomfortable, face rejection, and learn more about communication, building character, as well as learning the art of selling. So the whole labeling of MLM being a pyramid scheme, I think that's a whole lot of crap because let's say, for example, you're working for a company and your boss hires you and they've got, he's got top level executives, him, him or her have got top level executives. Now, these people are, are developing more money than you. So you can basically say, for instance, that you're working in a, in a pyramid scheme just by looking at that model because the people above you are making more money th- than you. So I think multi-level marketing, I've met a lot of successful people that have built a tremendous amount of wealth through it. Some companies are better than others depending on their model. And it also depends on how much drive and belief you have to make it work. So my next step was that I opened up a personal training studio with a friend. Now, this was the biggest challenge and the biggest life lesson I learned to this day. And that was basically how to judge character and to choose your partner wisely. So we knew each other around eight years prior to that through different friendship groups, playing soccer together. And I went into thinking that, okay, we both have our own individual skills. We've both got something to, that we can lean on and support each other with. So I thought that, okay, we have both have different types of strengths that we're going to come into synergy, coming together, working together, and to better each other to allow ourselves to grow more, more faster. So 11 months in, we got another partner involved, a good friend of ours who invested 40K in the company. So 
That was our way of expanding into group training because at the time we're just doing one-on-one and little small group training sessions. So we were ready. We were ready to rock and roll. However, it was around five or six weeks in. After that, 35K left our business account. The first business partner that we invested in, myself included, showed us an act of betrayal. This is where I really felt let down, deflated and brokenhearted. And you always hear people say, this is why you don't do business with friends. But to me, I think this was the biggest learning lesson because from that ex- experience, I truly wasn't looking at the whole picture of a person, their values, what their goals are, and what kind of person they are and how they show up in the world. I was only seeing the good in people, and yet there's good and bad in everyone. So this is a huge life lesson. So I generally don't believe that you can't do business with friends. You have to really look at the bigger picture of seeing that person in how they show up in life. What are their goals? What are their values? Are they in alignment to grow, to take constructive feedback and to learn as you go? So from that, this is where I really shut shop in my personal training studio and I ventured out more into coaching and personal training. So I was still feeling wounded, disheartened at the time because I felt like I had to prove to the world, prove to my family that I'm not a failure, that I'm going to make a comeback, that I'll show you world. So I had that mentality still. So there was a lot of hurt, a lot of anger in that. So that following year, I actually hired two coaches, one prepping me for my ever bodybuilding show and another one which was affiliated to mindset mentoring. So just to allow me to see and have a better relationship with myself. So through bodybuilding, I got my first coach, Jake, absolute legend. We're still friends to this day. He prepped me for my first ever rookie show in the ICN Federation. um, And we jumped on as well on the national stage. So my first ever show, I placed first in the rookie show. We absolutely smashed it. And in the nationals, I placed fourth. Now, this is a huge learning experience to just really see how much I can dial in in terms of my focus, discipline, and training, and to see the art of dieting, I would say, in like how much sacrifice are you willing to make in order for you to gain that trophy, to gain that championship status. Now, I'm not all about the, the materialistic trophy. You know, you are what the trophy defines you as. It's more about the character trait and the skills and experiences you develop along the way. So for me, that was just like pushing fitness and dieting to the extreme, which I think was a tremendous value. Not healthy. <laughs> I kid you not, it's not healthy, but it was a great learning lesson. So from that, I had, I had a huge, great response in knowing which direction I was headed. But yet, once the show stopped, I was still left with dealing with my own shit, dealing with my own emotions that I suppressed. So I was really stuck and basically pondering and asking myself, okay, what's next? What's next, hot shot? So this is what really allowed me to just seek help outside of myself because I just really didn't know how to deal with my own emotions and deal with my own mental thought patterns that I hired coaches along the way, some through spiritual healing, hypnotherapy, NLP, and business coaches that, are real, that really allowed me to fulfill a career in holistic health coaching. So through all that pain that I went through, I found purpose. And the reason why I title it holistic, because holistic is a whole, it's an embodiment of both mind and body, right? Because you can achieve the body, but how you get there is another story. Because are you sabotaging? Are you doubting yourself? Are you, are you your biggest enemy in the process? Are you truly happy at the end of the day in what you do for the activities, for how you interact in life, for the person you think you are? And this is my biggest pains. So Paul Check, really great holistic coach, I would say he's one of the godfathers. He labels this as the pain teacher. That the pain that you experience in life is a teacher for you to transcend to the person that you want to become. And there are many pain teachers that show up in our life. For example, we're overweight. We may, we may have been neglecting our health and fitness. We may be feeling insecure about ourselves. We may have experience another breakup, lost a loved one, experience a health scare, a disease, a virus, whatever that may be. It's through the next choice that you make that determines the results that you want to create. And through that, I was suppressing a lot of that during my bodybuilding campaign. Right after my first failure, I just didn't process those emotions in a healthy way. 
because I didn't have the emotional intelligence. I didn't have the strategies to cope or process those emotions because my monkey mind was always racing. So this is where I hide help outside of myself. And I encourage you guys also to do the same. If you're not in a great spot mentally, if you feel like you can't deal with your emotions, reach out for support. Again, my DMs are open, guys, because I know how it feels to be your greatest enemy, to be your biggest critic. So again, reach out to me, guys, in the DMs if this is what you're currently experiencing. Maybe I can shine some light, give you some clarity in what direction you can go or if I can truly help you. So the first question, guys, that I wanted to address is what is health? Because most of the time, we only think of health as the physical health, our physical fitness. Which is true, yeah? It's one part of the equation, but it's a bigger multifacet of mental health. You've got spiritual health. You've got emotional health. The biggest influence to health would be your mind, your mental health, because this is how you speak about yourself and speak into existence about yourself, about others in the worldview. You've got your spiritual health, which is your connection to yourself, to others, and the world through your creative force of what you truly want to create for yourself. And then you've got your physical health, your physical body, in the, the routines, the structure you have in prioritizing movement, exercise, and eating towards your goals. And then you've got your emotional health and how you process your emotions throughout the day. So what shapes your overall health is determined by your values. And values is another way of saying what's important to you. So we all choose to focus primarily on the same things in life of what's important to us. And most of our values are really common and it falls under these categories. We've got financial abundance that we're working for for more. If it's a house, if it's to have more stability, it's more, more freedom, more choices. We've got better relationships. We're working towards having better relationships because let's, let's face it, you know, when you're by yourself, it's lonely, it's depressing. But when you have people like-minded like yourself, you're having more fun, there's more engagement, there's just more excitement in life. Travel. You know, we all want travel as a goal because we want to explore and experience what beauty the world has to offer us. We've got fulfillment. Fulfillment is like what's going to give us more joy, happiness, and meaning in life. And then at the end, we've got health and wellness. You know, to be healthy, to be vital, to have the endurance and mental stamina to just go the distance. So many of us already know what to do. But yet, why aren't we prioritizing these values of what's important to us? Like we, we all know we should be spending more time with our family. We all know we should be eating healthier to tick off our health and fitness goal. We all know we should be putting in more work in our career, in our business to move the needle forward. But why aren't we doing it? Sometimes it comes down to the awareness of not, not, knowing, what, not knowing what's good for us and knowing what we know until we don't know, until we have a life scare that the pain teacher comes into our life. Most of the times we only change due to harsh emotional impacts and it's usually a negative consequence that results in our life. For example, a breakup, a, a health scare, a traumatic experience, a person telling us that we're not good enough and if we value that person's opinion, we embody that and we say to them, I'm going to show you. So it's generally a negative consequence that we have to experience in life in order for us to seek the positive. And this is just how we're wired in our DNA. Other times, it's just our unconscious. The unconscious is just taking over and just running the show. There are three aspects of consciousness, right? We've got our self-conscious of our sensory factors of based on our senses of how we see, smell, taste, touch, and hear. And this is generally run through our egoic mind which is defined for our perception and what we define the world to be. Then we've got our unconscious, which is where our memories, feelings, and habits we've acquired along the way that's made us ourselves. And then we've got a higher state of consciousness, which is called the superconscious. This is our highest potential, our inner genius, tapping into to source, to the possibility of infinite. So the unconscious, it ties down to your belief systems and based on your definitions, your perceptions of the world, your identity of what you think about yourself. And this lives beneath your conscious state. So you guys might be tuning in the podcast, driving a car, going for a walk. I'm not too sure. Maybe doing chores around. Or maybe just even listening 
in the comfort of your home. Now, that's your conscious state. But what's influencing that is generally your unconscious. This is sometimes referred to as the shadow. And a great way to look at this is if you were to visualize an image of an iceberg, right? You've got the tip of the iceberg, which is setting a float. And then beneath the iceberg, you have a huge chunk. And this is your unconscious. So the tip of the iceberg is a conscious. And beneath that is the unconscious. So you have a tremendous amount of matter, force, energy that's influencing your conscious states. I want you to think about your past experiences. That you broke up with an ex. That you chose, that you wanted to eat healthy, but it just didn't work along the way. You got fired. A friendship was betrayed. Why did you have those experiences? Most likely will tell you a story whether it's true or not. We would get a good or bad message in what belief we thought was true. A famous psychiatrist and study of consciousness, Carl Jung, said perfectly that your unconscious always meets you on the outside until you meet it on the inside. So unless you're looking to look within yourself, the, the vulnerabilities, your insecurities, the things that hold you back, the greatest pain teachers that you're not willing to confront, if you're not willing to look into that, then you're most likely going to project that in your external environment, in your outer world. If you're not looking within to work on yourself, to better yourself, to look into the fears that hold you back, then you're never going to really achieve personal freedom. You're never going to have a life of choice. So awareness is the first key. Knowing where this story is coming from. Is it yours or is it somebody else's? Are you truly convinced that it is true? Or are you validating those thoughts and feelings to be true? It's really important that you have this conscious communication, this internal dialogue of asking yourself these questions. Is this a thought or feeling that's working for me? Or is it related to the past? Is this going to serve me for more happiness, fulfillment, and a prosperous life? With what has happened to me, is it in my control or is it out of my control? What is this event, situation, and information teaching me? How can I use this to better myself in focusing on what I want to create and what I don't want to create? Be aware in how you show up in the world. In terms of your behaviors, your attitude, your interactions in life. Are you judging? Are you showing up in the world just as this negative, low vibrational person? Just hating on the world. Dreading the fact that you're doing a task or an activity. Where is that coming from? Get to the nitty gritty of it because once you do, you have more clarity in knowing yourself. When you know yourself, you know others. When you know others, you have more connection. When you have more connection, you have more meaning. And when you have more meaning, you have more power because you could define the world and how it is. So pay attention to how you show up. Are you scrolling through your phone every day that you lose track of time? Are you saying to yourself that you want to start eating healthier next week but you never really take the plunge, never take action on it? Are you always finding yourself attracting the same kind of relationship? When you can filter every decision you make, the words that come out of your mouth, how you speak to yourself, the emotions that you are choosing, when you can do that, you can literally shape the results in your life because you're shaping the person you're becoming. Do this consistently, you've already shaped your identity. When you shaped your identity, you've literally become a completely different person. And this is going to be challenging because there's going to be a lot of obstacles, hurdles along the way. But you don't want to stop once you come across the first hurdle because that isn't, that's an invitation for growth. Without the pain in your life, there wouldn't be no spiritual growth and there would be no meaning or value of what good you want to achieve in your life. So pay attention, guys. When we truly doubt ourselves, it's really hard to manifest what we truly want because the doubt, it's reserving a part of energy of us thinking that we're not good enough, insignificant, not capable. And you can already see, like, if you feel like you're that, that you're not good enough, a part of you is just like thinking, okay, uh, I'm only putting in 70% where you can actually put 100. We only sabotage based on us not meeting expectations. We think that we should be a lot further than where we actually are. 
But this is, this is fallacy. This is false. You are exactly where you need to be. If you can't adopt that beginner mindset, the, the student of life, that things take time. It's a skill set that whatever you're going towards, let's say, for example, you're starting your fitness journey. You're starting to eat healthy, move and exercise, but you're still overweight. And you're asking yourself, why isn't anything happen, happening after a week or two weeks? It must be me. I must be the common denominator. I must be the problem. But you're probably not doing it long enough. Maybe you don't have a plan that's working. Maybe you're working a, a crappy plan. If you're in a sales profession that you've only closed two people this week for your company and you say to yourself, I suck. But you've only been doing it for a month. You haven't been doing it long enough. You haven't been showing up consistently. You have to adopt that good things take time. You need patience. You need perseverance. Yes, you're going to suck at the beginning. But over time, if you keep doing it, you're going to get better at it. And when you get better at it, you're going to be more inclined to do it because you're good at it. And then it becomes second nature. It becomes habitual that you don't even have to think about it. That's how good you become. So how do you build confidence when shit goes down? The goal is to be more of you. The goal is to, to do more of what you truly want to do. And yes, it's going to be scary. Yes, it's going to be confronting. But through that, that confrontation with yourself and holding that tension of where you are right now, where you want to be, the character traits, the belief system, the skill set that you're trying to acquire and learn, when you can hold that, and go in the direction of where you want to go, then that's how you truly bridge the gap of the law of attraction from moving from point A to point B. There's going to be hurdles and setbacks, but the setback is a plan for a comeback. So you have to be more willing to be you, which is authentically you. You have to be willing to be more vulnerable, to be more honest with yourself, because when you're honest with yourself, the truth shall set you free. Because when you truly want to be you, then there's nothing to prove because you're living your truth in who you are. And generally, that's what the outside world wants of you is to be you. So be real. Be fucking real. Get clear in what your goal is, what your vision is, what you're working towards, the activities that's required for you to be that person, the behavior and character traits of that person, of what life would be like if that person how can I be that person that's already acquired a result? How do they show up in the world? Be consistent and dedicated to that. And that's how you acquire the result. It's the show up structure. It's the, it's the showing up regardless of how you feel. And that's when you truly start taking responsibility of yourself. And that takes growing up. Myself, when, when we all faced the, the pandemic, when we went into lockdown, a lot of us lost our jobs. And this is where a lot of us went through an identity crisis, myself included, because I only saw myself as a bodybuilder, right? I only saw myself in one limelight, this one identity. And when that was taken away from me, this is where my identity was shattered. This is where I just really caved in and just like felt lost. So if you are going through an identity crisis, just like losing your job, losing a loved one, breaking up in a relationship. I know how it feels, but yet don't take things personally because this is one identity that you created. You can create more of something completely different and that just requires you to, to have patience, to be courageous, to face fear dead on and to just really go exploring what your strengths are and then just working on that. And again, it just comes with honesty, just being honest with each, yourself. So start working on yourself, guys. Because once you do, that's when you acquire the skill sets. That's when you start really just stepping into your dream life. Because you can rest assured, if you aren't working on your own goals, you're working for somebody else's. You're living someone else's version of what life should be like, as opposed to you consciously choosing how you want to be living your life. Your choice is your superpower, believe it or not. Because you can choose how you show up in the world. You can choose what career path you want to go down. You can choose where you diverge most of your attention and energy towards. You can choose how you think or feel or give meaning to how you think and feel. 
You can choose who you surround yourself with. Be mindful of where you're spreading your, your time and energy. Are you giving it away too easily? Or are you really limiting and preserving it for you to just fill up your own cup so then that way you can pour it into everyone else's cup? Choice starts with resonating what feels good on a heart level. Like, what do you want? How do you want to feel? What kind of person do you want to be? And how do you want to interact with life? And I mentioned this before, it requires tension of holding that image, that dream, that vision of your desired reality and bring it into the, to the, to the current reality and having the courage to just step out into the unknown, doing more than what you're capable of, changing your lifestyle, your habits, your behaviors. The people who have mastered tension of doing something consistently, repetitively over, over and over again are actors when they get given a script. They read the script, they reread it again, they internalize it, and then they step into the role of the character. How many of you have thought that the actual character that they played when you were younger, me included, <laughs> that you only affiliated that actor as that character? Like, growing up, I used to love Harry Potter, I still love Harry Potter, but I was just used to see Daniel Radcliffe as, oh, look, Harry Potter is in, is in another movie. You know what I mean? Bodybuilders, they are great masters of tension because they show up in the gym consistently, applying the reps, and then they shape their dream body. You've got business owners who show up doing whatever they, whatever needs, whatever is necessary of them to acquire great product, service, customer satisfaction, and taking on the constructive feedback and learning how can I increase my profit margins? How can I d deliver a better service or enhance product quality? It's asking of you to do the boring work, to do something so much that you become a master in doing the boring. And this leads you to the results. And this is what separates the best from the average is they do the work regardless of how they feel. So this is your mental health that you really have to take charge and ownership of. And mental health, what also influences it is mastering your emotions your emotional body of how you navigate them for success. You see, we've never taken the time to learn the language of the unconscious. And the unconscious is communicated through feelings. And all feelings are good, right? There's no such thing as a negative feeling. We describe them as feeling as the ones that we don't want to experience. I want to give you an example. So I own two dogs. I've got a, a black Labrador and a black Brindle, Brindle, I think it's Brindle, Brindle Frenchie with my partner and the Labrador was my first ever dog and I never thought I could love something so much. I had a cat previously but I didn't really think much of it because cats, they have their own agenda. They just come to you when they're ready, when they want to have love. So I'm like, oh yeah, they can, they're their own masters but dogs, they actually want your attention. They want your affection. Cats do as well but dogs more. They, they really are your life companion. So let's say for example, my dog runs away and tragically, he gets hit by a car. I would be feeling grief. And grief is just a, a feeling of showing me how much I loved something or someone. Someone dying or passing away, it shows you the extension of what grief is, which is you losing a love in your life. Let's look at anger, for example. So someone, let's just say you're at home and you hear a noise at the back of your house, there's an intruder, there's a burglar, they want to steal your possessions. Now you may feel threatened and really tense. You start activating your sympathetic nervous system of just fight or flight response. That this feeling of anger is a feeling of protection and being protected. You're protecting your loved ones, your own, li your own livelihood and your possessions in your house. A feeling of being hurt or betrayed. It's a warning sign of what you misjudged on someone before. You see, from the unconscious, they're all good communication systems. If you can't feel sadness, you're going to have a hard time feeling joy. If you can't trust someone, you won't be able to experience all the other good stuff in life. None of these feelings are good or bad. You just defined it as that. They all have an intended positive outcome. It's to communicate something 
in the level of survival because you're unconscious. It's your memories. It's your experiences. It's your feelings of what you've cultivated to where you are right now. And at some point in your life, it gave you a, a defense mechanism. It coded the emotion around an event. You see, the unconscious, it plays at the level of survival. It's sharing feelings with you of saying, okay, I want to experience more of that, those high-level emotions, those high-level feelings. And I want to experience less of that, though, that low-vibe emotions, those low-vibe feelings. We need to have a better understanding and receiving the communication. And once we have greater perspective of this disinformation, we can truly transcend it to wisdom and into truth, getting more understanding and clarity of our past, redefining it as that, getting the lesson that we need for us to truly let go and let in a new, better and improved meaning and reality in life. When you're in the frequency of this, when you're in the understanding of maxing out in life and experiencing everything in life, the highs, the lows, you're getting an emotional contrast and you're truly valuing life for what you want it to be. Because let's say where you are right now, you, you, you're content, but you know there's more of you that you can give to achieve your, your potential. If it's really focusing on your health and fitness, so you want to start shaping your body to be stronger, healthier, fitter, to have better relationships. That's a desired reality. It's something that you want that you currently don't have. Ask yourself in that moment, how does that person show up in life? This is what works for me, guys. So I'm just sharing this based on your experiences. When you're going through a difficult time, realize that the person that you're trying to be, the person you're aspiring to, to reach, they've already figured out the results. They're just maybe five, 10 years ahead in where you are right now. So ask yourself, how would they deal with this situation that you, where you are right now? And what is this teaching showing me and how I can truly benefit from this situation. So how do they show up? How do they behave? How do they deal with this situation? And what are they doing regularly in their activities? Now, you can see the high vibe emotions of where that person is right now and where you are right now. You may not be feeling those high end emotions, but you already know what happiness, what joy, what peace feels like. Now, if you show up with that emotional frequency and you get in tune with that on a gut level, with your intuition. This is where you can add emotional contrast of how good feels like and what bad feels like. So you have to play full. You have to experience all of it because that's what's going to allow you to have value of, okay, I'm having a shit day and I know what this feels like and I know what is holding me back. If it's not having self-empowering routines, if it's not living up to my true nature or purpose, or it's me just doing dumb shit that's not making me move forward. And knowing that, okay, how will this person act? Bring that into the current reality. Bring that into the now. What's my next obvious action, right? It's not to be persuaded by fear. And this is where a lot of us, that when we look into fear, we think it's truth, but it's one part of the truth. Life itself is lived in duality, that there's positives, there's negatives, there's ups, there's downs, there's highs, there's lows. You have to experience all of it to add emotional contrast and value of knowing what a shit day feels like and knowing what a good day feels like and knowing what life would be like if you were to achieve the result that you're aiming to achieve, that you're striving to go for. Because fear itself, it teaches us a lesson. Fear is essentially you scared of the challenge. Fear is based on your programming, of your belief system, of how you define the world, your perspective, because you're only seeing it through one viewpoint which is part true. At the end of fear is the reward that you truly want to achieve. That you want to change your career, but you're scared that you feel like you're not good enough. That you're fearing to break up with this person because you feel like you're not good enough. You fear in wanting to go after your health and fitness goal, but you've already failed in the past and you don't think you're, you're worthy, you're adequate to actually achieve it. It's a belief system. Generally, it's wrapped around fear of failure, fear of rejection. Fear is a great tool and it's a great teacher to show you how you can trust yourself more. Even if it means being afraid and actually do, going for it and, and going after what you truly want. 
a lot of the pains and fears and emotions that I've overcome, that I've let go, was the attachment and the neediness to control. To control the future, to control my external circumstances, situations. For example, needing to be right in relationships. A lot of us have arguments, heated discussions because we want to be right, because our ego is in the way. But are we trying to be right or are we trying to win the love of the relationship? It's seeing it through the other person's perspective and holding on to your emotions of not feeling, okay, this person's making me feel not enough, inadequate. They're not making you feel shit. You're making, it, you're making yourself feel like that because of your interpretations, your definition and perspective of it. Hold your ground. Let the emotion just subside and see what they're saying in the relationship about you, about the relationship and how you guys can work together. Not wanting to lose my job and then being made redundant and knowing that all jobs aren't safe. Because I was scared that, all right, this is my livelihood, this is everything I have, but yet there's more to life. You've got more untapped potential that you're truly not addressing because you're comfortable. Not wanting people to judge me in the way I look, but realizing people are going to judge you either way. So fuck it, be you, be you to the fullest. That really allows you to express yourself on a heart level and to go out and play full out in life. It's about discerning, making appropriate choices for you and others, being present with life and what pain is teaching you and how you can really obtain that lesson into true wisdom that's going to allow you to live your truth and allow you to achieve that personal freedom. Last topic I want to talk to you guys about is physical health. So physical health is your routine. It's your structure around moving more, exercising, eating towards your goals. If it's fat loss, if it's building lean muscle. It's mainly shifting your perspective on it, right? Because most of us see that as a chore. But food, it's fuel. It's, it's, it's there to, to enhance livelihood, to give us more energy, to give us more nutrients, to, to work towards us acquiring more of what we're trying to go for. If you can see it as a job, because most of us, right, we go in, we clock on, clock off, we get paid at the end of the day. There's a set of tasks we need to accomplish in our work. We have a plan. Once we do it over the week, whatever payment structure we're on, we get paid. Same thing applies going to the gym. If you have a blueprint and plan in knowing what you have to do, if you know exactly what food you should eat, that's going to provide you the energy, the, the goal closer towards fat loss or building lean muscle, to have more mental clarity and focus in what you're doing. When you have that, you just show up with more of that. You have this internal compass knowing which direction you need to go and you know exactly what temptations and distractions are going to come in the way that's going to sabotage you in your health and fitness. So first things first, you need to have a training plan. Just like you have a set of tasks and objectives for work, you need a training plan. You need a nutrition protocol to know what you have to follow in order for you to achieve that goal. Right? Next thing is, what sacrifices are you willing to make? Be mindful of how you speak to yourself. Most of us, we already set the excuse. And again, that comes with just living a lie. And that's the reason why we probably don't have the result. And we say to ourselves, eating healthy is expensive. So is Uber Eats. So is eating out at restaurants. They're all expensive. Pick which one you want to believe in. When most of us say that we don't have time to prioritize our health, our fitness, pay someone to give you the time. Pay someone to give you the plan, give you the training program, and then you just basically have to show up. They can probably show you in your schedule of what time block you can actually incorporate and fit fitness in. When you say to yourself that right now I've got to prioritize and focus on my kids, you know what? I truly congratulate you. That's, that's really good. To be in service and to show love towards your friends and family, I think that's really important. But yet, you truly are being at disservice with yourself. When you show up 
for the good of your family and your kids, when you don't fill up your own cup in the process, then you're being at disservice of yourself. You're neglecting your health and livelihood. Because what happens when you get sick? What happens when you become frail and weak? That you may be 12 days sick. Who's going to take care of you? Your kids? Your partner? What if you go 12 days without pay? What then? Responsibility. Ownership. Honesty. This is what's going to allow you to just step into true freedom and true authentic confidence. Know what sacrifices and trade-offs you make, you're willing to make. You can have both. You can eat out and still be healthy. You can eat out and still have a six-pack, have an amazing booty, have an amazing V-shaped taper. It's understanding what plan are you following. How important is your health and fitness to you? What's the long-term gains for the short-term sacrifices? Are you willing to put the cookie down and eat more regularly healthy, nutrient-abundant foods? Avoid temptation as much as you can and gravitate towards more healthier options? Because if you can make the temporary sacrifice and look towards the benefit of having a six-pack, looking fit, having the discipline to control, then you've basically mastered your physical health. If you can learn to say no temporarily and yes to more of what you want, then you're already in the process of achieving the result. Seasonal sacrifices. It's not long-term. It's just taking a pause on other things and focusing on one thing that you truly want to amount to, that you truly want to achieve. So that's a wrap, guys. So a quick summary. Health, it's broken down into mental, spiritual, physical, emotional health. The mental health is how you speak to yourself. The definition and perspectives you have based on your unconscious of who you think you are today and what you've acquired for your past that's got you to where you are. Is there parts of you where you cause doubt or sabotage or are you your own in a critic that prevents you from actually having it. Understanding the dialogue for the questions that I've asked you guys. Use that as a base, as a reference. If you feel truly stuck, reach out for support for someone that's actually got the result or someone that you truly value as a person that can allow you to just really step into more of you and to achieve authentic confidence. Emotional health, learning how to, how to deal with your emotions. Emotions, they aren't bad. It's good. It's your communication system. It's teaching you to experience more of something and less of something. There's a, in, there's a positive intended outcome of your emotions, right? Of it coming from a level of survival. So you have to understand that. And physical health, you have to really have a good routine and structure around what exercise you want to do that's going to promote health and vitality, what nutrition protocol is going to get you towards your goal, if it's to build lean muscle, to get stronger, if it's to lose fat, and understanding the, the excuses and the blocks that we make that actually prevent us from actually going for it. Be willing to make that seasonal sacrifice for that long-term gains. We're in a world where instant gratification is just so easily handed to us. We've got Uber Eats, we've got online shopping, we've got Cole's Checkout, I don't know if that's uh, instant gratification. I and mean, we've got all these substances that's just going to give us that quick fix, that short-term solution. But you have to go the long-term game. You have to play the long-term because that's when there's more fulfillment, there's more value, and there's more character building. That through that experience, nothing can take that away from you because you've acquired it through blood, sweat, and tears to get there. So... Guys, if you really, truly liked the first episode, give it a like, comment. If you feel like this would be really valuable to a friend, please share it. And I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Thank you. Peace and much love.